Welcome. Today we're going to talk about active bystander intervention and what that looks like. This is just an introduction. We'll discuss each of the components of an active bystander at length in a later module in this course, but this is your introduction to the overall scenario. So the purpose of this slideshow in this class is to inter introduce the topic of active bystander, the bystander effect, and today we're only going to briefly talk about the four Ds, but we'll explore them more in later modules. The learning objectives are that learners will be able to identify what an active bystander does. Learners will be able to restate and give an example of how the bystander effect stops us from standing up against racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, and harassment. Lastly, learners will be able to identify the four Ds of an active bystander. So the first thing I want to talk about is the bystander effect. It is a highly studied effect of human nature. We are actually less likely to intervene and help someone if we're with a lot of other people. And when firemen and police officers are trained, they actually have to be trained to overcome this phenomenon of not wanting to invade someone's privacy in order to help them. And this is something that has been studied over and over again. And every time it turns out um, that it's very hard for humans to actually intervene in a situation because we have so much respect for each other's privacy. So to overcome the bystander effect, there's three decisions we have to make. We have to notice and decide that the event is a problem. We have to decide how best to engage and stay safe, and then we have to choose to act. And there's four ways that we're going to talk about today to help you intervene effectively. So the direct way of intervening is when you directly respond to the racism that's happening by naming what is happening and addressing the person who said or did something that was, in fact, racist. Delegate is to ask someone else to help you, a teacher, someone with more power, um, perhaps HR. And distraction is a way that sometimes you can de-escalate the situation by distracting both people. Um, and this is one of my favorites. We'll talk about it more later. And the last one is delay. Though hard to do, it can be powerful to wait and talk to the people involved later. And an active bystander has the moral courage to step up and interrupt racism in a positive and safe way. Direct intervention is when you do something like ask a question. For example, Dad, that came off a bit racist. Do you want to say that differently? Or, whoa, that sounded off. Terms like blank are really hurtful. That's not what you intended, right? Or simply, what do you mean by that? The next possible intervention is to use a three-part statement. And a three-part statement is a great way to set boundaries. So this is one I've used where you name the behavior, say you just used a hurtful word to describe people who are gay. State the effect, that word is very hurtful to me and my chosen family, and then state the behavior you want. Please use LGBT or people who are gay to describe me and people like me in the future. That is a very effective tool and you can substitute any kind of behavior in here. And it's a really great way to set a boundary. We do not use language like that, but we do not act in this way in this environment. Sometimes it's not always safe to interrupt racism or harassment if it's physical and you have to, you can call the police if you feel like that's a safer option or campus security or a boss and you can just document it and then turn that document into another person. That is a great way to delegate. Putting yourself at physical risk or escalating the situation can be dangerous. And our intention is never to escalate a situation, right? We always wanna bring the situation down. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes us intervening could make it worse. So then we need to delegate. So, especially if we are younger, smaller, or adults dealing with a dangerous situation, it's important to delegate, right? We don't want anyone to put themselves at physical risk um, to try to intervene. Often it does 
um, help, but sometimes it can cause the situation to get worse. So we want to delegate. So in this situation, a person seeing this would run and go get an adult um, if this was the playground or, you know, this happens at work and you have to go to HR or you have to go to your boss. And if it's your boss, obviously you have to go to HR. Distraction is my favorite. In a situation where direct intervention may escalate, distracting the perpetrator or the person being harassed often works. For example, women wearing headscarves are often harassed on buses. If you ride the bus long enough, you'll see or hear this. And one strategy might be to ask the woman if you can sit next to her and start a conversation with her. Or you could walk up and ask both of them for directions and say, you're new to the city and you want to know how to get to this restaurant or this zoo or whatever. If you can distract the situation, sometimes you can de-escalate it. <laughs> Delay is hard. Sometimes it's complicated to intervene in the moment. And then later you can check in with the person who was targeted and ask what support they need and if they want help addressing the damage. So this is a really hard one, but sometimes it's important for us. The fifth D is left out. I wonder if you might be able to figure it out. I'll be interested to hear if you can figure that out. So just to wrap up, the purpose was to introduce the topic of active bystander, the bystander effect, and briefly talk about the four Ds. The learning objectives were to be able to identify what an active bystander does. And there was those three choices. First choice is to recognize the situation as a problem. Second choice is how to intervene. And third is to choose to act. Learners will be able to restate and give an example of how the bystander affects us from standing up against any of the isms and harassment. Hopefully you remember that the bystander effect is because we have such a deep respect for other people's privacy, sometimes we just don't get involved, but we have to overcome that if we're gonna have solutions. Or sometimes someone says something really awkward at a party and it's, and it's racist and the room dies to a quiet and you just don't know what to say. Hopefully you have some tools today and hopefully you remember the four Ds that I gave you of delay, delegate, distract, or directly address the harm. I look forward to hearing from you. See if you figure out that fourth D.